play Jaws the name. No doubt you've seen me on the news clip. I'm a sled jockey competing to represent Earth at the Cyber Speedway. You know how important the races are. It's more civilized than all-out war. So when I win the right to race for Earth, my victories will guarantee prosperity for our planet. Cyber Speedway, also known as Grand Chaser in Japan, was released on the Sega Saturn way back in 1995. Sid Mead, the man behind quite a few design elements from Blade Runner and Tron, typically the vehicle stuff, designed the vehicles in Cyber Speedway, which itself was a spiritual successor to the PC game Cyber Race. Sid Mead was no stranger to video game design, actually, as he actually designed the really unique Sid Mead's Terraforming from 1992 on the TurboGrafx-16, which I really need to get a hold of so I could review one of these days. Cyber Speedway feels like a bargain bin generic futuristic racer that was heavily inspired by Wipeout. Now, I've got to be fair here. This was an extremely early Sega Saturn game, and it certainly shows some signs of potential if it just hadn't been rushed to the market. I also don't really like calling it a Wipeout clone, as the two series really couldn't be further apart. Yes, both games feature racers trying to make it to the finish line while battling it out along the way, but here the battles are virtually non-existent compared to other arcade-based racing elements that the game features. This game actually shares more in common with something like Daytona than it does Wipeout. Its main problem is that it just needed more time in the oven to really turn into something special. What we ended up with here is a racer that shows promise, but not much else. The menu system is exceedingly basic, like almost as if a high school student who's just learning programming just whipped something up basic so that, you know, you have a little instruction sheet. And I'm not joking, it's that basic. The story elements also highlight the low-cost development of the game. Each alien stands on the exact same backdrop except the backdrop has a different color, for example. The story is told over one static image of an NPC talking, and the voice acting is usually laughably bad. The graphics are also very basic, featuring a ton of pop-in and low-resolution textures. There are only six courses in the entire game, and some of them are extremely small and cramped. What's worse is the frame rate. It's inconsistent at best. I find it particularly bad when there are too many racers bottled up together. One minute you're sputtering along as slow as a snail, and then the next you're flying headfirst into a wall once the racers break up. The hit detection could have also been refined, as I noticed that I would clip the side of an opponent even though I didn't even touch them. While there is a weapon system in the game, I never got it to work as I wanted. There are pellets scattered here and there around the tracks, and they offer you one weapon, which is basically rockets, but I never found them useful. I mean, I would fire, 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 and they just seemed to shoot straight in front of you, and if the enemy wasn't precisely in the targeting range, nothing would happen, you'd miss, and that would be the end of it. So I just stepped on the gas and kept on going. In fact, I only used the weapons in this video because I figured I could at least kind of show you how they work. But the thing that annoyed me the most with this game is that damn pace car. Why, oh why, did they include a bloody pace car in this game? It's a green craft that just flies around the laps doing absolutely nothing except getting in the way. He's always in the most ridiculous places possible. Like, for example, let's say there's one little tiny tunnel that only one craft can fit in. Well, as soon as you arrive there, boom, he's right in front of you, causing you to smash into a wall and thereby causing you to go back to second or third position. And I absolutely hate this damn guy. And it should have just been you and the racers. I don't know what they were thinking. 
One interesting element of Cyber Speedway is that you can adjust four different aspects of your craft, the engine, steering, brakes, and a special bonus. So for example, you can make your craft accelerate as fast as possible with light brakes and sharp turning skills while being impervious to incoming rockets. Or you could have a ship that's more akin to drifting around corners, but is able to keep its boost up. That's another interesting area of the game, is the boosting. You can use the L and R buttons in order to cause a boost shift in your vehicle, which allows you to easily get around corners. It might sound weird, but when you actually play, it works pretty well. Once you master this technique, the game becomes quite a breeze. And as a matter of fact, there are only two difficulty settings, and the game's kind of a cakewalk regardless of which one you play on. Now thankfully, Cyber Speedway features fairly tight controls once you get used to the interesting gameplay. Now, I've heard people say that this game is floaty, and I guess that's sort of true, but then again, you are racing on a hovercraft. And after a few rounds I found, or a few laps, I found the physics to just make sense. The biggest problems with Cyber Speedway are the substandard rock music, sorry bygone dogs, but I just didn't dig your tunes, and the cheap sound effects, laughable story sequences, and the overall generic feel of the game are what ultimately held this game back against its contemporaries. What I will say though, is that I really appreciated the fact that this game features split-screen multiplayer, which near the Saturn's launch was kind of a rare thing. Today, a game like Cyber Speedway pretty much no longer exists. These were the type of games that weren't flat out crap, but they weren't obviously AAA masterpieces either. These were what I call the B games of back in the day. And this entire line of genre or subgenre, or basically class, no longer exists. Whether that's a good or a bad thing is ultimately up to you, but I must admit that I miss finding little gems here and there where I could kill a few hours of mindless fun. And yeah, maybe gem is kind of pushing it. Thankfully, while the game sure has its fair share of faults, it's enjoyable enough that if you find a copy for, you know, a couple of bucks, I say go for it, why not? You could do much, much worse. But if you can't find it for a few bucks and it's going for like the 20 30 dollar range then i would recommend you go and find more competent racers either way happy hunting allow me to congratulate you on an excellent race and to confer upon you the honor of representing earth this season at the cyber speedway good show nevertheless it's far too early to relax the real races are still yet to come. Shortly we shall be boarding a transport to the planet Glaciers en route to the first race. Gather your personal effects and uh, do refrain from being late.